Okay, so this is part three of my little discussion, my little monologue here, incredibly boring on uh, drip brewing. So what we wanted to point out is that in our first test, the harioplastic with the swirly pattern there, with the large hole, um, we got 1.01 .01 extraction rate where we should have gotten 1.20. And what's interesting with these is you see the filter, um, especially a number one filter, will actually drop through there. There's a theory about how this um, swirly pattern aerates coffee, um, then it drips down these, these little ridges in the side. Um, I find it all to be a little hard to believe that that has a huge effect. But anyway, that was one point zero one percent. The Hario Ceramic, uh, this little guy, it was a little bit unfair because we only had a number one and we had to use a number one filter which was good because it uh, didn't result in the paper taste that we got from the Clever Coffee Dripper where we had a number four filter. A smaller filter for a smaller brewing method equals less paper filter taste but we'll talk about that. It is a pretty little guy 1.07 was our result, whereas 1.20 should have been our, our method. Clever Coffee Dripper, if initially we had a terrible grind on it. We went way too coarse. I did it coarser than I do at home. I didn't even use the same technique I use at home, which I don't know why. Anyway, um, the Clever Coffee Dripper, initially we had 0.93% extraction, terrible. And we actually had the worst paper taste because we were using a large number four filter on it too. Um, so what we did, because um, the poor extraction reveals paper filter taste, um, is we switched, we switched to a plain white filtropa, um, and we got a better flavor. We think at Sweet Maria's we'll be switching exclusively to the naturally unbleached but white paper filters or whatever. The second thing we did was that we used, uh, we changed our grind. And we started doing some stirring, which I normally do at home anyway. So we, we, uh, we let the coffee and the water infuse for four minutes. And we, um, I'm sorry, we started three minutes. We did a one-minute stir and a three-minute stir, right? And we got some better results at 1.11. And then when we just went a little finer um, with the grind, uh, it was something that is a little finer than I usually use for paper filter, but... Um, we got great results. We hit. Uh, we were actually a little above. We were 1.22%. Um, that was a four-minute extraction. Um, here's my notes. They're sloppy, but it's a four-minute extraction. 1.30 minute stir, three-minute stir, a four-minute stir, and draining at about five minutes, 30 seconds. Um, and the interesting thing I'll point out is we actually and you can do this easily with a clever coffee dripper, we divided the cup into two different uh, uh, well we, we just dosed into two different cups the initial extraction um, the initial cup measured 1.23% and the second cup measured 1.19 uh, 1.19 1.25 actually now that's really typical if you have a technovorm or something. Um, you'll notice, I mean, if you take a sip of the first uh, coffee that comes through it, you're ruining the rest of the pot because you've taken a, an extract. So in a sense, it's great to think of drip brewing as always a blend of the coffee that comes first and last. And if you say, oh, I just want the coffee first, it has the most aromatics and the most oils and the most, well, you're kind of, it's, it's a law of averages. So you have to look at that. And I don't, and tasting the coffee that comes at the end of the extraction isn't worse, it's just different. You mix them together and you get a cup of coffee, and that's what you're really judging. So, um, but I wanted to point out that, okay, well, our Bon Mac plastic, which is a copy of a Hario without the swirly vents, but with the same hole, uh, the same large hole, gave us 1.11%. And the winner, dead on, was the traditional ceramic filter comb. I'm fully willing to accept that it was just because of bad technique, but I also have to say that in the real world, people are gonna pour water into 
grounds and not use the best techniques. So I think a device needs to make it easier to have a good technique. The Clever Coffee Dripper is great because you need almost no technique because you simply add all the hot water to the coffee and they sit together just like a French press. But I, I love the filter brewing. I, I think I like the art of the technique. So, um, and it's all of these, even the most expensive cone filter brewers are cheap. So um, that is the main point. And um, so it's technique, it's extraction time, it's how long you have contact with the water and the coffee, it's your preferences. But we're also finding that paper filters, the selection of paper filters matters. And my postscript note on this is, I'm sorry about this long talking video, boring, but um, Swiss Gold does not work in these brewers. I've tried it over and over. I'm no longer a great fan of Swiss Gold because of the, solu uh, the, the insoluble solids, the suspended solids that come through the cup, which you don't even get with a, a paper filter because it removes those, are bittering. If you let them settle out to the bottom of a cup, fine. But if they're suspended in the cup, you have a gritty mouthfeel and you change the flavor. You have a lot of bitterness um, due to these. These are not things you normally drink in coffee. You get them in French press, espresso, and in Swiss gold. They're also not great if you have a cholesterol problem. I don't, but I don't want a cholesterol problem. So those are, th those are something that, um, something to think about. But especially in the Clever Coffee Dripper, we've had very bad results from using a Swiss gold. Um, so it's not really a route I recommend to removing paper filter taste. I just suggest better paper filters. And of course, um, you'll see this in the other video, we're actually doing it, but we wash all our paper filters before we use them. Uh, you want to preheat, especially your ceramic filter cones anyway, so you always boil more water, put your paper filter in, rinse it through, let it drain, um, and then you're ready to brew. And you've helped to get rid of some paper taste. Um, if you ever want to try and see how much paper taste your filters have, all we do is we simply brew, do a brew without coffee in it. And you'll find that the natural, the, the, well, the worst is the Chemex, the natural Chemex. They need to be washed out. Um, it, it has a very strong, it's like paper tea if you just brew that. Um, white Chemex is second. And these are simply because Chemex has this huge surface area because it's a folded filter with a lot of paper involved. Um, and then we have our Aroma Brown, which has a lot of paper filter taste. Um, I would say the hemp would come next, uh, but much remarkably less paper filter taste, um, though it's unbleached. And then the, probably the best are the bleached style paper filters. And what do they call it now? Let's just see. They call it environment, environment friendly cleansed. And it's done in the Netherlands, so I assume that's true. Um, okay, thanks. Sorry about all the talking. Bye.